Welcome everybody to Spirituality Adventures. This is a non-judgmental place to explore spirituality, and we're so glad you're here. This is a viewer and listener supported podcast, so we greatly appreciate your support. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Be sure and like, share, and subscribe to any of the social media content platforms that you're using. And then if you go to our website, spiritualityadventures.com, you can make a one-time donation or with a monthly subscription, you'll gain access to our bonus content. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome everybody to Spirituality Adventures. We are excited to have Rachel McMillan with Hi. us today. Thanks for joining yeah. us, Rachel. Rachel has had a, a career in singing and makeup artist, and she's worked with uh, radio, The Buzz, mm -hmm. the 96. Point five, the buzz, yes. which was one of my favorite stations. And yeah. so thanks for joining us today, Absolutely. Rachel. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Yeah. So I always like to start with people's background a little bit, like where you're born, where you grew up, all that kind of stuff. Um, I was born in North Kansas City. So born and raised Kansas City. Um, I've kind of always stayed up north. So my whole family's here. Um, I've kind of dabbled in Overland Park and the Lenexa area, and then I'm back up north now. Okay. So, so like what elementary, junior high, high school? Um, elementary school was Southeast Elementary. Middle school was uh, Plaza and Lakeview. And then I uh, graduated from Park Hill South in 2013. Okay. All right. I, went, I was in Plaza um, like in sixth and seventh grade. Yeah. And then went over to Park Hill mm -hmm. before there was ever a Park Hill South. I'm way older uh. than you, but at any rate, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Southeast, I knew a lot of teachers at Southeast, mm -hmm. so probably probably knew some of those. Well, cool. Um, so, like, tell us what were you into in school when you were growing up? What kinds of what kinds of things were you involved in? Um, I in, especially in high school, like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always enjoyed singing. Um, I did uh, singing competitions and um, in high school, and I lettered in uh, music and the choir or choir um, every year. And um, so we would go get ready for these competitions at Mizzou and and compete um, from all the Missouri high schools. So this was, was this like Park Hill South. Yeah. That had a, a choir that traveled, competed, yeah. mm -hmm. and so, you were a part of that? Yep. So um, we had a choir that competed with that, and then we had a smaller choir where you had to um, you had to audition to get in. Mm -hmm. And so I was in that, and that was uh, consisted of eight people. Mm -hmm. And um, that opened up my eyes to want to do more. Right. And then I, I did more solo stuff, competed with that, and then... Um, I also was in broadcast journalism for my high school and I did the student news. So, <laughs> and then I did a debate as well. Wow. Yeah. Any theater stuff at all? I did theater. Um, I, I did two shows and then I ended up in the makeup department. So, um, I had more interest in doing makeup mm -hmm. for the, for the actors and uh but i was more along the lines of the behind the scenes person yeah. for that yeah, yeah interesting so i'm curious like like i'm i'm bad at knowing when like the series glee when it came out mm -hmm. how old were you <laughs> i don't know uh pretty young yeah because i mean i i heard about it but i never really got I, super into yeah you didn't no. okay i I wasn't sure I wanted to watch that, but then like I ended up watching a few episodes and then I got really yeah. hooked on it. Yeah. I really end up liking it. And it made me wonder if there were, um, if it inspired young people to get into theater, music, theater, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So I yeah. just, that's why, that's why it popped into my head. I was yeah. just kind of curious. So. so what was your inspiration? Why did you, why, why were you drawn to music at such a young age? Um, so my family and uh, close family friends would have like get togethers and my, my uncle had this DJ equipment and, um, he invested in these like karaoke microphones and decided to have like karaoke and our family get togethers. And that's kind of where it started. I was eight. Um, whenever I 
started singing in front of my family and um I sang Evanescence Bring Me to Life and then just the feedback I got from my family they're like we didn't know you could do that <laughs> we didn't know you could sing I think I've sang like little hums and you know here and there but I don't think um I was really comfortable singing in front of people until wow. that moment yeah so Evanescence I saw Evanescence in Kansas City at yeah. the Beaumont yeah and it was an amazing concert and I was it wasn't a huge a concert yeah and so i was like right in front of amy lee that's amazing just yeah that'd she's be awesome. <laughs> just like just blowing it out right and uh man that's a powerful song yeah so you're singing that at eight yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. yeah so um did did you did you guys did you have any kind of faith background at all did your did you yeah. So any church singing or anything like that? Well, just um, kind of curious. I, I was raised Mormon. Okay. Till I was, um, I was baptized at eight and then I was in the Mormon church till about 12 and, um, got out of it and I, I don't really have anything too much to say about the background other than like, um, I feel like it gave me a good foundation, but I kind of in, uh, bouncing here and there mm -hmm. to figure out what I want to do spiritually. Yeah. So this was not, this wasn't our LDS, right? This was LDS. The LDS. Yeah. And, um, when did they build the big temple out here in, in North of river? Oh gosh, that's I'm been a decade sure. ago. I maybe? went to a church in Platte city. So it's been okay. some time. Yeah. Yeah. So all the way. Yeah. <clears throat> I had a, I cycle. I had a cycling buddy who went up there to mm -hmm. that. What do they call? They call. They have a name for. Them. Do they Latter call Latter Day them? Saints? Yeah, but no, they don't call it a church, do they? They don't. They call it something else, like a. Anyway, maybe it is. They just call it a church. <laughs> yeah, that's like way back in the memory. Bank yeah, yeah. There. No, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. So you did? Did they have choirs? They did. Yeah, they, they did. But I never you didn't sang. Jump in there, yeah. so it was all school related. Yep. And karaoke was the thing that right. got you going, got yep. you inspired. All and right. I was super involved in music. My older sister was as well. She also sings, um, but I think I wanted to do more with it. She kind of did yeah. it for fun. And I was like, I want to be a singer, and that's yeah. kind of. So what, what kind of what music were you drawn to, as um, you went through high school and then post high school? What what were your so Give us kind of your musical. I specifically remember being really into Mariah Carey, Tony Braxton. Like I would always sing Unbreak My Heart. And um, I liked Evanescence a lot. I liked Paramore. Um, super into just the female led vocals, um, especially um, when they led bands. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want to do that, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, um, but whenever I competed, and choir um i was all choir music like mm -hmm. german led lullabies or something crazy that i would not normally sing but it gave me that background and then as soon as i graduated from high school i basically had to reteach myself to sing rock music um, because i had this choral background that i was told to do different techniques and i had to break, basically teach myself how to break those techniques to sing rock music hmm. and um so now i i enjoy singing rock music a lot more and i do um when i first started getting into the music scene outside of high school i was actually doing background music and vocals for um r&b and hip-hop artists so <laughs> it's kind of like very all around the all around the table here yeah yeah that's so that's a lot of fun so now you you write music as well i do when mm -hmm. how old were you when you started um trying to write music and that's been very recent too i was working at a travel agency um full time and so that was probably four years ago i really started writing okay. um but i remember writing in my cubicle and i <laughs> i need that clock going sorry yeah but writing in my cubicle and i was having a, I had a lot of stuff built up and I found comfort in uh, writing music and um, I don't I, I just joined a band too and I knew that's kind of something I had to really get into and learn 
Yeah. And, um, but I was really into music and I listened to a lot and was inspired by a lot of different music genres. Mm-hmm. So, so what, what's your, tell me about your process for writing. Like what, like how do you get your inspiration? What is it? Do you actually sit down and plan out time to write or is it more spontaneous? It's more spontaneous. Um, I like to drive a lot and you know, my, my job now allows me to drive. I'm on the road quite a bit and there's times where I just turn down the radio. I don't want to hear anything. I just want to drive. And that's where I get my inspiration is whenever I'm not overstimulated by other sounds or distracted, um, by other music. And so I just get inspiration by being on the road and it just comes to me. Um, there's times where it would come to me in the shower and I hope that I would remember it, you know, by the time I got out. But a lot of the music that I write was actually, um, I came up with in the car. Yeah. As weird as that is. (laughs) Do you you put it on voice memo or something like that? Yeah. Like record it on a video, like, you know, three, two, one, I would start singing. This is what I have in my head. Mm -hmm. And then um, a lot of the times when we, my band and I first started writing, um, I would send that melody to them and they would just take it and Run go with along it. with it. Yeah. Cool. What were your main themes? Um, self-development, I'd say. Hmm. Um, just overcoming obstacles. I had a, I have a lot of that. I have a lot of um, just uh, overcoming self-doubt a lot of the time. I feel like that's something I personally deal with quite a bit. Um, and it's kind of crazy how I'm doing what I'm doing because I had so much self doubt and, and pursuing it. And now I'm doing it like, and when I'm like, I don't, I didn't see myself doing this at all. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Do you have like, did you ever have, do you have video of when you were singing young karaoke all that kind of stuff? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think there's a video of me singing, um, bring me to life in eighth grade um, on YouTube. I wish we could <laughs> we need, yeah, have we, that fired up. We need to have that. Um, but there are some That'd other. Fun. Yeah. Some other. Oh, and there was a, another video of me singing on a cruise ship, um, singing with this guy that plays piano. He was performing on the cruise ship. And then um, I think that's kind of what led me to want to sing professionally as I, I performed with this guy and it went really well. I sang house of the rising sun by the animals. And, um, it was just all impromptu. He was just reading off of his iPad and I sang and my dad recorded it and just how many people like enjoyed it. Hmm. I started crying. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty, uh, awesome. impactful. I thought. So your me. parents encouraged you in your singing career? They yeah. Were, I'd say, mm-hmm. Um, there were times where I, I feel like I had to do stuff to really prove that this is something I wanted to do. And my mom just has wanted to be protective. And she was like, you, you know, full time job and, um, you know, have a backup plan, which I've always thought in the back of my head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was kind of the, it was hesitant because she cared. Mm-hmm. And same thing with my dad. Um, but now I'm doing it because I, I half listened, <laughs> right. I should say. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's, if you don't mind, let's talk about the self doubt stuff just a little bit. Yeah. Cause um, I, I mean, I can certainly, I've, I've had a lot of that the last couple of years yeah. with all I've gone through, but, um, what was that? What was that like for you? What, what, what obstacles did you feel like you had to overcome when, um, it, when it comes to some of that? You know, I, I feel like I do have some natural ability to do things, but then I don't feel like when I'm, I earlier said I was a, I feel like a jack of all trades and master of none. Um, I, I didn't read, I didn't learn to read music until uh, I was a senior in high school. I didn't know. I didn't grow up playing any instruments. Um, I just sang and most of that was developed because I sang karaoke. So I never learned how to play any instruments. Um, didn't learn to read music until senior, a uh, senior in high school. And then I, when I graduated and went to college, I like had to write these symphonies and just doing the whole like math and different notes. I was like, this is very difficult for me. I didn't know how to do Jeez. this. So, um, but I knew that's what I wanted to do. And so I just did, I feel like I just didn't have these skills built up that um, maybe some other people had an advantage of growing up playing instruments. And 
So um, I think that's where some self doubt comes is mm-hmm. I just don't feel like I'm experienced enough. Okay. It's, um, but then just do, like real do you, world. <laughs> do you have, like I wrote a blog a few I don't know, weeks or months ago on like the, my inner critic. Mm-hmm. Cause I have a pretty harsh inner critic. Yeah. Like I will, I will speak to myself in, in ways that I would never speak to another Anybody person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And especially the last few years, but I think it's always been there a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, um, I've really had to work on, kind of like that voice and where does it come from and yeah. why is it so harsh and why why am I having a hard time forgiving myself and loving my you know being compassionate toward myself all those kind of things mm-hmm. so um but has that been has that been a big big thing for you to overcome or is it just mostly like experience based like it, are you like because um, you don't feel like you've got this breadth of training in all these different areas is it there's more about that. that and i think um you know i, I come from uh, my grandparents are immigrants so wanting to have a life here and um and your grandparents my grandparents came are immigrants. from so my grandma's from cuba okay and my grandfather's from mexico okay and um they believe in hard work and just doing kind of what you're told and wanting to it was just kind of like you don't have these huge dreams other than the big dream was to live in America. And um, and my mom kind of grew up that way where she's like, you need to have a job where it's nine to five. You have insurance benefits and, um, you know, you'll mm-hmm. be taken care of. And I've never really thought that way. I've mm-hmm. just been always an entrepreneurial mindset. Mm-hmm. And still to this day, sometimes um, I we'll have um, discussions with my family, like how different it is. And, you know, and I got my first taste of them being right with the pandemic. But, you know, I, you know, my mom was like, you need to go into healthcare. And I was like, I just don't have a desire to do that. You know, I've always, I'm happy with what I'm doing. So, um, hopefully it didn't get Yeah, (laughs) isn't that interesting? Because I think, I think in the older generations, I mean, certainly my dad's generation, but I mean, maybe even mine, um, you, you can have this mindset where kind of like that, the financial security piece of the thing yeah. is, is like the most important thing. Yeah. And like, it's not so important to follow your passion. Right. You can, you can get financially, you know, you need to, follow financial security you need to get financially secure and you can do what you love on the side right not, you don't have to get paid for that but i think like so i'm fair i'm pretty entrepreneurial mm-hmm. and i i worked a bunch of different jobs when i was younger and going through college and and yeah and studies and stuff but i've always and i've always kind of followed my passion which mm-hmm. and even even with spirituality adventures that's what i'm doing now and it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't always immediately lead to yeah. uh, security or financial security yeah. and all that, but, but it is, but I am following my heart. Yeah. You know it's hard saying? to explain a vision to somebody that doesn't see it. Right. Um, if you're the only person that can, and, <laughs> you know, um, because in their mind that they have what's worked out for them and mm-hmm. they just feel like you should, um, try that same path and you just you were wired different and want to try something else Mm -hmm. and um so far it's been working out for me that way (laughs) yeah knock on wood but (laughs) yeah well cool so um so you college post-college that kind of stuff you were you still kind of stayed into you've always been in the music world right Mm -hmm. um Let's talk about I you you worked one of the one of the stations I listened to yeah. was Buzz Yeah the Buzz ninety six point five. Yeah. Ninety six point five the Buzz. I used to either listen to them or the bridge mm-hmm. when I was driving around for I mean for years. Yeah. For years and years and years. 
Uh, well, I'll, I'll take it back to the very beginning. I remember um, being in high school and listening to the buzz in the morning. Every every morning when I would wake up and get ready for school, I would listen to a Fentra on the buzz. Mm-hmm. And I just remember, like, I want to work for that station one day. <laughs> That's what I told myself. And um, I, I remember whenever I graduated and had... Uh, when I went to college, I tried to be an intern for that station and I didn't get picked. So I ended up going with this other station that's like their rival, like parent company station. And I, <laughs> I'm not going to say the name cause I don't want them to get in trouble, but uh, my college wouldn't recognize their, their college credit um, because there wasn't that at my college that I went okay. to. So, but I eventually ended up getting picked for an internship. So I was actually like illegally working (laughs) there, but I wanted the experience and I didn't care. I wanted the experience to be in radio Mm. and um, I didn't care if I was going to get college credit for it and I wasn't getting paid for it. I just wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, And they knew that. I I found out later that they knew that I wasn't going to get college credit for it and I'm just there working. But um, I I enjoyed it and I was there for six months and... um, after that, I was hoping to get brought on full time and um, I believe they lost my resume three times or they just didn't have the finances to to bring me on full time um, because radio is kind of like that. You just never know. And I kind of got discouraged. And so I ended up uh, ending my internship with them. And uh, but I ended up remaining friends with a lot of them um, because most it's radio is such a small world mm-hmm. and you eventually will run into them sometime again. Mm-hmm. Um and I ended up leaving and then maybe eight months later, I see a, a job on Indeed because I was just looking through jobs. I'm like, I needed to find something else because I was working at um, as, a, as a waitress and I was like, I need to find something else that I would enjoy. Mm-hmm. And then I see uh, 96 by the Buzz, 98.9 The Rock, <laughs> like working for um, assistant producer assistant promotions uh, director and I applied and I ended up getting a call and emailing and then I got my interview and I got I landed the job and I remember crying because I'm like this is what I wanted since high school and <laughs> yeah yeah so I, I worked with them for almost four years nice so nice. what was the, what were some of the highlights of that four years concerts and I loved working with the people I got I got exposed to a lot of the music business that if I wasn't involved in, mm-hmm. I don't think I would have mm-hmm. ever been. I, I tell myself that I have had a lot of once in a lifetime experiences because of this, because of the radio job. Um, I've got to meet a lot of my idols. Um, yeah, so tell us about that. So I I um, met the, the kooks. Okay. Yeah. Um, I helped with the concerts and promotions and I got to meet the Lady Gaga's um, marketing person that would help her with uh-huh. her tours. So he would come with her and I uh, met him and he also manages other acts, big acts. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just remember Lady Gaga off the top of my head. Right. Um, and I got to see Metallica for free because I worked for the station. I got to see... Um, Oh, so many. Just, <laughs> um, what is it? Steel Panther. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And um, so just crazy stuff like that. And right. when I, I would work for, when I worked for 98.9, it would be rock fest and that would be a long day, 23 hour day kind of thing. Right. It's just nuts. Um, But we looked forward to it and it was mm-hmm. always a lot of fun and you don't have concerts like that anymore and not anywhere near here <laughs> yeah. as much. It's like you have the huge music festivals where they're like three days, but that was the one where it was all like a one day music right. festival. Yeah. And cheap, cheap alcohol there. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that's cool. So what, um, so in, so you, what year did you start with the band uh, Par, Parvenu? Parvenu. Parvenu. Which, uh, 2017. Okay. Yeah. And Once you guys did two EPs. Mm-hmm. And did you write all the songs on that? I or did. Or co-write or? I wrote most of them uh, with the help of my guitarist, Thorin. And um, he he also sings. He was a vocalist teacher. And so I have like the best, best mm-hmm. of both worlds there. So he would teach me a lot because I wasn't, 
um, trained in that way. I never had voice lessons. I just had choir mm -hmm. and uh, I worked with him a lot cause he would help students, you know, and he also was a guitar teacher. So felt yes. like I learned a lot. So we, <laughs> we, I was looking up Parvenu on, on, uh, iTunes mm -hmm. and you can get it on Spotify and um, you can probably get it band camp, I guess, or, yeah. you know, wherever, but, um, yeah. So you have to be a little bit careful because there's a DJ Parvenu. If, if you want to go listen to Rachel's voice, <laughs> she's got a great voice. Thank you. So, um, you can check that out, but it's not DJ Parvenu. It's, no. it's just Parvenu artist. It's got a, well, anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to describe it. I won't so, try to do that. Yeah. With that, um, we are starting a new project due to, um, you know, one of the members that we had for Parvenu left and we decided to pursue different, um, sounds, um, and just kind of cultivate a different music experience. And, uh, we haven't announced that yet, but, um, we just picked a name and we're, we've been writing music since COVID, honestly, since 2020, we've been working on this. And when I moved away briefly, temporarily, um, and I got all this equipment and started recording from home and basically that was the skill I learned was trying to record my voice at home and I would just send it off to the boys and have them like record on top of that and we started writing music virtually is what I call yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not so, sharing the the new name yet. That's not out. You don't um, have to. I'm just Yeah, so well, we just picked it so I'm going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> and hope Tell that us. everything works out, but <clears throat> yeah, it's a Silurin. Spell it. S Y L A R I N. I, you know, I mean, what is, give us what so, that means. Um, it's kind of made up, <laughs> but I thought of the name Sirens and Sirens was taken. There's so many, I, I mean, I've spent hours trying to find a one word name mm -hmm. and I could not find anything. And um, so I just was researching Siren. And it was like a, was it League of Legends character or something? Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think that's all I could find on it. And it wasn't like even a huge character from what I could tell. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of what we stuck with. Cause I feel like that might um, work with what we're writing. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> and Parvenu was a, was a rock. Yeah. Like a soul rock. Yeah. Is that what you like to call it? I call it soul rock and I mm -hmm. almost would say this is Parvenu was a little lighter than what we're writing now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah. it's just as with a new drummer, it's just brings different dynamic mm -hmm. to the, to the sound that we're, yeah. that we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Matt, do you know, uh, the band members that she's played with at part with Parvenu? Um, I'm talking to Matt Cox, our yeah. videographer. Okay. Several of the people that she plays with with weddings. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. We haven't got to that yet. So, yeah. I was trying to remember with your connection with her band. So, all right. So, Matt doesn't know the Parvenu guy, mm -hmm. guys and gals, but, um, but you all, you're doing a traveling wedding band now, yeah. right? Yeah. Called KC Flow. Correct. Yeah. It's yeah. under the Patrick Lentz band um, umbrella. There's four bands. Uh, that's the parent company, Patrick Lentz. And then KC Flow is um, specifically like regionally we perform. So Kansas City, I've been to Omaha a few times, Des Moines, lots of Iowa weddings. Mm -hmm. So they're branching out. And uh, they just recently went to Cabo. So oh, in wow. Mexico, I did a wedding there. It's amazing. Serious? Yeah. This is like, these are destination yeah. weddings. Dang. It's amazing to me how much money people spend on weddings I know. these days, right? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because, so like I, when I got married, you know, I think our wedding would have been considered fairly expensive, but... Mm -hmm. um, you know, we did it at a church, so the church really didn't cost a lot of money. Yeah. We probably had 600 people show up. Oh my. I had probably eight or nine, you know, groomsmen, wow. you know, it was a, it was a big yeah. wedding party. Right. But I mean, like my parents did the, 
they did a probably like a barbecue meal for the you know for the reception thing and then we had we had cake and punch mm -hmm. afterwards you know we didn't serve everybody a big meal right we didn't we we had some singing in the wedding but we didn't we didn't have a big band yeah. afterwards you know like people really weren't like doing destination weddings mm -hmm. back then and like you know yeah. unless you're I guess rock stars or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm talking like in the 80s, right? Yeah. And so people just weren't doing, uh, you know, those kind of weddings. And ours ours was kind of considered big and expensive yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But it would be like considered nothing today. I was reading statistics now and the average couple and what they spend on a wedding now. It's it's just crazy. It's over. I think it's over 25,000. Yep. That it's, sounds about, I, don't, I think I read 30. Yeah. yeah. Sounds That's crazy. the average. Yeah. So, but people can spend, you know, it's just, and that's the average, right? Yeah. So, so, Incredible. yeah. So it's a big, <laughs> it's a big industry, right? Yeah. The wedding industry is a big industry. One of the podcasts that I have been on is, and I, I mentioned this to you in private, is with Timmy Gibson. Mm -hmm. He has the Timmy Gibson show. Timmy used to be a pastor in Kansas City. And, uh, but he, he probably does a wedding every single weekend. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Matt Cox is doing photography for weddings. I have a niece who's with uh, Lala Inspired. I did an interview with her mm -hmm. and she she's doing photography and weddings and family awesome. photos. Yeah. And she also does a videography thing for where she does for elderly people where they oh, capture okay. stories and yeah, stuff like that. That's awesome. But at any rate, such a huge industry. So you literally are traveling all around the Midwest yeah. and Cabo. <laughs> I didn't get to go to Cabo because I was too new. So they, they rewarded that with. Uh, oh, any of you guys who are doing planning a destination wedding, get a hold of KC Flow. Yeah. How do they get a hold of you if they're interested in that? Um, they would have to reach out to Patrick Lentz, um, the, the contact info, their email address, and they would have to set it up. How, and how do they do that? What is there a website? or? Yep. We have a website. What is it? Patrick Lentz. Spell uh, his last name. L-E-N-T-Z. Okay. Yeah. Patrick Lentz. Dot then, com. Mm-hmm. And then go there and then you, right. can, you can go start booking <laughs> bands. <that's> right. <laughs> PLB. Yeah. All Patrick right. Lens band. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so you could have Rachel McMillan sing at your wedding <laughs> or for you grandparents out there, you could have, you know, your kids or your parents, you could have kids wedding. Some of you might have grandkids weddings, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, and what kind of music are you doing? at these weddings um there it's cover music but we, it spans from like we have my girl like we have uh, something for every demographic so mm -hmm. can appease the older crowds mm -hmm. can appease the younger crowds we got top 40 in there got just the good hits okay yeah so it's never never boring right I always have people on the dance floor so yeah <laughs> oh that's fun yeah that's fun so meals dance music uh, drinks, everything yeah. going on. And you're doing this almost every weekend um, right yeah, now? So Is it I, like kicked back in? Because, you know, I know the pandemic hit and mm -hmm. really kind of wiped out some of your oh, yeah. your industry, right? Yeah. So I when I worked for the radio station, um, everything was on hold because there wasn't any concerts or mass events that need to be produced. So I uh, took a break from radio. And then I also worked in business travel and that's was on a halt for till further notice and mm -hmm. then um and then i got informed of this job opening that they needed female vocalists at the patrick lentz and um somebody that was already working with them he was a drummer uh recommended me and i mean i haven't talked to this person in so long so to hear from him and telling me about it i almost didn't go for it because i was so nervous i was so i was like i've never done this i've never mm -hmm saying um cover music to wedding bands like or with a wedding band mm -hmm. I, you know i just didn't think that was that self-doubt coming in mm -hmm. i just didn't feel prepared and then i told myself like well um right now i'm child childless um i don't have anything big going on in my life nothing should be holding me back when am else when else when else am i going to do this basically and so i just told myself 
screw it. I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say yes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see what this entails, see how it goes. I'm going to try to feel this out. And then um, 45 minutes later, I get a call and I interviewed on the phone for mm-hmm. like almost an hour. And so they interviewed me and uh, next thing I know, I had my first wedding in July and I got the job in May. And um, it, I just remember loving it so much. I'm like, this is what this is what I've been looking for. Mm-hmm. And I feel I've, I feel a sense of fulfillment from performing um, because it's a different it's a different way of performing than what I would do with my original band. OK, so, yeah, I feel like I get different aspects of singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you're 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 in a big family, big white age group, dance floor, you know, it's a, it's a celebrative time like when yeah. you were doing gigs with Parv- Parvenu, mm-hmm. you're probably in what bars and clubs and Yeah, and like local music venues mm-hmm. and we we travel just a little bit regionally, but you know, there'd be a lot smaller shows that just mm-hmm. be different. There's people that just came for a good time and, and drinks, but it's just totally different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, I do, I enjoy both of them Yeah, d- for different reasons. And then you also got into the, uh, doing makeup artist yeah. stuff with, uh, weddings as well. Right? Yeah. So I just, I just got a job, uh, working as a makeup artist. Um, and I've been doing that, uh, for four months now. And, um, the story behind that is I, I actually got COVID in 2020 and lost my voice. Um, so I couldn't really sing. Um, this was before the wedding band and everything. And that was like my main hobby. I, that's what I enjoyed to do, or that's what I like to do and couldn't sing. I couldn't sing what I used to. I didn't have the range and like my voice was healing and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to hope that it comes back. (laughs) Um, and then I just started doing makeup. I started like researching these different techniques, tr- trying all these new palettes. And um, I started documenting my looks on my Instagram profile. I started taking pictures um, and then it kind of like caught on with people and people really enjoyed my looks. And it was just a different way of being creative without using my voice. Um, so that was different, like fulfilling in different ways because I couldn't sing. So I was wait- mm-hmm. wait- waiting for my voice to heal. And then, uh, um, because of the Instagram profile that I have and all these pictures that I documented through the pandemic, when I picked it up, I, that's how I ended up getting my job. Cool. Um, So it's kind of like a full circle moment because I, I didn't go to school for it. I'm self-taught and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Yeah. So what's your, what's, how do people find you on Instagram? Um, so I just created a new one, uh, McFeeling Glam. (laughs) So it's, uh, spell it out. M C F E E L I N G L A M. McFeeling Glam. Glam. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, when I did radio, my last name was Rachel McFeeling Good. And mm-hmm. so I changed it to McFeeling Glam. <laughs> <laughs> so. Good. Yeah. McFeeling Good. McFeeling Glam. Yep. Awesome. Um, and then how about. Uh, your this new band that you're coming out with you're you're already starting to record stuff so yes. you've done all the writing mm-hmm. for this new e- is it going to be ep yeah like yep. four or five songs yep yep you've and done you've done all the song you've already written the songs yes it recorded. we're we're recording in the process of recording now right now they're demos um so there's just um stuff we've been working on behind the scenes and haven't really truly announced much of anything because it's still kind of in the baby stages. Um, But we have a plan and uh, we're really excited. We Mm -hmm. think this is going to resonate quite a bit with people. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it's kind of interesting. You're, so you tend to lean toward sort of the entrepreneurial side of things. You Mm -hmm. tend to try to follow your heart and your passion. Yeah. And, to me, there's there's a sense of spirituality about trying to follow your heart and your mm-hmm. passion. Like, so you had this this Mormon background. You're not. You, that's not what you, what you identify with anymore. No. But what 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 does that sense of spirituality feel like when you think about like your this this thing in you that wants to 
follow your heart, follow your passion, mm -hmm. sort of be entrepreneurial, take risks, even mm -hmm. though you have self self doubt, even though yeah. you, you have, you know, you're, you're constantly maybe have to work yourself into yeah, like going for it at times. Um, I think my biggest motivator has been energy, just feeling what's right at the time. Um, and I, I hear it a lot now, manifestation. Um, I've been writing down a lot of what I want um, in life. And, you know, I think immediately if I want something, I'm dead set on it. Like back when I wanted to work for 96.5 The Buzz in high school, I knew like if I just meet the right people, if I network mm -hmm. and that's what I wanted to do. And I ended, ended up eventually working for them. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of, I wish I had all these examples of how many times that's happened to me um, mm. of just wanting something so bad and going after it and just like taking every single avenue that would that it would take to get me there. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I just had to be open to it, open to possibilities and taking the risk and actually going for it because you can always get in your head and tell mm -hmm. yourself this is not going to work out. But yeah. then, yeah, like I said, with the whenever I was interviewed for the wedding singing job, I was like, when am I when am I ever going to do this again? When am I going to get this mm -hmm. opportunity? This is something I've waited for and I'm not going to talk myself out of it now. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I, you know, so I. I've, I think so many people stop short of taking risks mm -hmm. because of fear, self doubt. They talk themselves out of it, you know, all these kind of things. And I, that's not to say that everybody is wired to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. or to take risks that way. I, I, you know, I, it's probably a, it's probably a smaller percent of the population mm -hmm. that actually lives on that risky edge. Yeah. Um, I, I've tended, I, I, I would be sort of like, I mean, I started my own church back in 1990 with, with zero people, with yeah. zero money, with zero facilities, with zero backing, mm -hmm. raise my funds, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then like now what I'm doing now with spirituality adventures almost feels like back back to square one again, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and starting all over again. Like yeah. I feel like a teenager again and I'm like, oh no, crap, I don't know if this is gonna work. And mm -hmm. all these kind of, you know, self doubts again. But, um, but, you know, if I try to think of doing anything else, mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, people are like, well, why don't you sell insurance? Why don't you sell houses? Why don't you sell, you know, right. cars? Why don't you sell like, like well, you know, I love bike. I'm a bicycle guy. <laughs> if, I saw, if I wanted to sell anything, it'd probably be bikes. But that's, yeah. I really like, I don't, I've never had a passion for anything except what I would call spirituality. You know, it's so like with spirituality adventures, I say my my purpose is to, to help ignite spiritual growth and transformation mm -hmm. through, and I do blogs and I do the podcasts and I do uh like Bible teaching and events yeah. and different things like that. But it's always, for me, it's always been about the sense of like, well, this is kind of what I'm made for. This is what God called me to do. And it seems like when I teach and when I do certain things, like, like it, it, something happens, you know, with people spiritually. Mm -hmm. And, um, I have a friend who is a, is a local, independent artist here in Kansas city mm -hmm. who likes to say he likes to curate transcendence hmm. and he's a performer. Yeah. Um, Love that. His name's Calvin Arsenia and he does, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. he plays a harp and he does other instruments, but I always thought that's a cool way to talk about, um, I like it. Yeah. Songwriting and performing is a curator of transcendence, you know, because when you're, if you think about when you're performing, and you can have those moments where it feels like the room synced up, the people mm -hmm. are synced up, the mm -hmm. music is synced, something's happening that's connecting you, your band, yeah. the audience. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, there's something tangible about it. I mean, you can you can feel it at a Chiefs game when eighty thousand people <laughs> are cheering for Mahomes. Yep. I was I was at the Dallas game a few weeks ago, but you can you can feel it in a small room where people are gathered and and the music does something oh, yeah. spiritual and connects mm -hmm. people. Absolutely. I, I, that's what I've always, you know, music, 
touches me emotionally. Music mm -hmm. connects me to people. Music transcends something, touches something yeah. that's, I think, spiritual that helps unite us and yeah. connect us together. So I just, I'm, I'm just curious if, if, uh, if that's, you know, what is that something that you that you've sensed in your performance and in your music? Yeah, I, um, I'm really a big fan of um, artists that talk to their audience. Um, I think, you know, um, yes, you can like perform, but I, I feel like there's those messages that people need to hear in your own voice as well. Um, I want to connect to the audience and, um, you know, touch people's hands, you know, like I, I want to try to um, make it memorable for them, a memorable experience every time that they come out. And um, my bassist used to say, if there's anything I can do as a performing artist, it's for somebody to forget that they have rent due mm. in the time of the moment, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, just like forgetting the troubles you're leaving mm -hmm. it at the door and then you're going all in and um just being entranced in music mm. and the experience and and it can lift it can lift suffering or it can yeah. lift heartache or it can lift broken dreams for for that that moment yeah. like there's something yeah yeah well that's awesome um so it's very cool you've 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 uh, had a lot of different experiences yes. in Kansas city. You've met a ton of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so what are you looking forward to? What's, what's around the corner? Um, I'm performing, um, try to perform a lot more with Casey flow and then I'm um, kicking off the new project, um, and going all in. And this is, uh, I feel like this is the time to do it. I know, I'm right now I'm 27 and I think I just have like this clock in my head that I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go for it right now, you know, <laughs> put it and, all in. And will this new, uh, the, the music, how will they, will they be able to connect with you on your Instagram? Yeah. Is that the main way to connect with you is Instagram? Yeah. We're going to, um, as soon as we officially announce everything, you'll, you'll see it. I'll have it on my personal accounts too. I'm going to promote <laughs> as okay. much as I can on it. <laughs> All right. Well, very, very good. Well, thank you so much yeah, for joining us at absolutely. Spirituality Adventures. And uh, everybody, if you want to uh, check out, you need if you know anybody that needs a wedding band, <laughs> all right, uh, connect with uh, Patrick Lentz mm -hmm. and Casey Flo. And then uh, as well, makeup artists and then also coming out with a new band. Give us the name of that new band one more time. Silerin. Silerin. Yeah. Silerin. All right. All right. Well, thanks for joining Thank us you. at Spirituality Adventures. Thank you so Thank much, you so Rachel. Much. All right. <laughs> See you next time. Have a good one. This concludes today's episode. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, or subscribe to the social media platform that you're using. And then go to our website, spiritualityadventures.com and make a one-time donation, or you can subscribe monthly and receive our special bonus content. Thanks so much.